Hello, I'm Joe Dillette. We're going to be carving accessories with the shaft tools. Accessories that go on cabinets or furniture. Things like an applique. I've got some appliques I need to do. Or carving a design on drawer pulls. Also chase carving. Chase carving is just taking the V-tool, doing a very simple design. So these projects can be done either with the seven piece uh, set from shaft tools or their 12 piece set. Chase carving is typically done with a V-tool. The 12 piece set has a number 12 V-tool, six millimeter wide, and the seven piece set has number 12, 10 millimeter. I'm going to use the larger one. Chase carving is just simply taking the V-tool and doing a design. So if we just start off with a design, so I'm just drawing something freehand here. And let's say you wanted to add this to a cabinet or your piece of furniture as part of your molding. Then it's just a matter of running the V-tool right on the center of that design. like that. It's very simple, very elegant. So you can run it by pushing it by hand. Sometimes you have more control by just tapping it with your mallet. The mallet I'm using is a neoprene mallet. Shaft tool sells one like this, but it has the green neoprene on it. I really love their mallet. I'm not paying attention to any particular grain because no matter which way I go, if I'm coming up this way, I'm doing the smooth cut on this side and the rough cut on this side. And so I cannot avoid going the wrong way on one of the directions of the grain. And that's all there is to a chase carving. Just using the V-tool. So it's very quick. You just come around like this. Now you can spin it. And it adds a very simple elegance. You can take and put a little extra flourish. Let's say you want to add something in here. You can just that little simple touch will really set your furniture or your cabinets off with a very unique personalized design. So here are some examples of something you can quickly do as a gift for someone. Also making pictures, very simple designs. One type of carving is an applique that is done normally in a thinner piece of wood and the carving is done and applied to the furniture or the cabinet. The first thing we can do, if you don't need a scroll saw, you can take a coping saw and saw out the design. An applique is a carving that is added to typically a drawer front. So I am doing some appliques that we be put onto a cross. It's normally done in a thinner piece of wood so it doesn't stand out 
very far. For this, we're going to be using, you can use either the seven piece set, the V tool, the number 12, 10 millimeter, and we're going to be using out of that set the number three, 12 millimeter. So it's a fairly flat gouge. With the 12 piece set, the V tool is a number 12, six millimeter, and for the flat flatter chisel, we're going to be using the number five, 20 millimeter. So one of the things to explain is the curve of this chisel. These two chisels, this one being a number three, and it's narrower at only a 12 millimeter, it's about half the width of this 20 millimeter, that is a number five sweep. And the reason why they're very close to the same is because of the numbering system. So the way the numbering system runs, if we take that basic diameter, that's about the diameter of this circle. Going halfway through would be about a number nine, like this, 180 degrees. If we were to take this here, which is the number three, the number three is covering only about that much of the circle. So, and in that same radius, we have this number five. So this is the number five. Which is maybe 45 degrees of the circle, and the number three is only maybe 30 degrees of the circle. But it's on the same radius. So what makes the number is how much of the circle that it covers. Where this is a number nine, so if you get a number nine that is this wide, then you will be getting about the same radius. So on these, we're going to be using basically the corners, about half the tool in that little flat area here. I'm going to take the V-tool and make the stop cuts. So to go in the right direction is coming down this way. Here's the grain is going this way. And I orientated the grain because this is the weakest part. The weakest part is the beak of this here dove, and I want the grain to run the long way. If I had the grain running the short way, that beak would break off. So that's why I orientated the grain like this. So we're making a cut that's coming down this way. So if I was to go up, that would be the wrong direction. So I'm going to go about halfway into the wood. And if you feel like you have more control by using the mallet, it doesn't make any difference. Now before I come down into here, I want to do a stop cut. So I'll just pound that in and stop that chip from going any further. And I'll take this number five from the 12 piece set and just cut that top. That's the wing on the other side of the dove. I'm going to cut that down about halfway. Now the belly of the dove is going to be curved in here. So this is going to be a deeper cut. So I'm going to go back to the V tool going in this direction because of the way the grain is coming up here, and then to come up on the other side, I'm going to go in this direction. And while I'm cutting that, I'm going to cut these feathers in the wing. Start getting the shape. And the feather underneath is down a little bit deeper, where the one on above it is tucked over the top. So I'm laying the V-tool to where this wing here up against the line is vertical. And that makes it look like that feather on the bottom is tucked under the one on top. It's number five. And I'm going to scoop the inside of this wing. So the body of this bird 
is kind of, this wing is coming down like this. There's a hollow area in here. I didn't draw the hollow area, but I'm just going to cut it in because I don't want any flat spots on this. I want it to look like it's carved all the way around. So I'm going to get rid of all the flat areas. So I'm digging this down. Now you can use the number three gouge the same way. It fits that same curve. Round this belly up a little bit and come down and cut that beak a little bit coming down like this. And then I'm going to roll the top of the head off. You can turn the gouge upside down, come down like this using either the number 5, 12, 12 millimeter, or the number 3. This is a cloud that it's riding on here. So we're just going to round that off. And I'm going to make a little bit of a dent in the cloud right here. For the lines, the puffs in the cloud, I'm going to take the V tool and I'm going to come up and this was kind of straight and I'm going to just hook this around. I'm just pushing it in and if it's, uh, I'm having a little difficult time cutting it, I rock it from side to side. Now the reason why I'm not coming down is because I could blow that bottom out. So I'm going up into that. Now I, to wrap it around, I'll take the V-tool and I'll come down on it to roll that around that edge. Taking the flat gouge, either the 5 or the 3, I'm just going to start rolling this off. Get that neck a little thinner so the head is rounded out. That eyeball, take that V tool, and you can even take the larger V tool. This is the, the 10 millimeter. And I'm just going to go right around that eye. Just get it to stand out there. Get these edges rolled down. I like to use these gouges upside down to do my rounding. Just a little bit smoothing off. Now the appliques are normally glued on. Sometimes in an inconspicuous spot I will drill very small holes to put a little brad in there to hold it. In doing drawer pulls I just went and buy the commercial wooden drawer pulls and then just draw the design on there. Now this one here I'm just going to do a corn on the cob. And then just kind of saw it out. And this will be the corn like that. I have a machinist vise for the holding and I've lined the metal jaws with wood. Just screwed the wood inserts in and that protects the underside of the drawer pull. It's sawed out and ready to carve so I have it mounted in the vise. The tools we're going to use is a the number 12 V tool from either set, the 7 piece or the 12 piece, this number 3 12 millimeter that's from the 7 piece set, or you could also use a number 5 12, 20 millimeter because the curves are about the same. The first thing I do is I've orientated the grain in this direction, and I am going to take the V tool and make the stop cuts. Because the corn is rounded, my stop cut is shallow here and I'm going deep around 
the side. I'm going to take this number five and just start rounding the corn off. I'm using the tool upside down. The curve is just about perfect for what we're doing. Now I need to increase the depth of my stop cut where it's dropping off the edge here. You can see how that corner of the number five it just works beautifully in there. The same with the number three, the fishtail. Okay, now for this leaf, I'm going to make the leaf in like this. And this leaf here, I'm going to probably show more the underside of the leaf. I'm going to show more the top of the leaf here and the underside here. And how I'm going to do that is take the V-tool and make the stop cut coming down deeper and sloped under so I can see the underside of that leaf. The difference with this side is the stop cut is going to come starting here right at the edge and the top of the leaf is going to go deeper. With the top of the leaf is out for towards the top, this one is going to slope in. going to continue up with the stop cut close to the top of the bend. And that's so I can get more of the underside of the leaf. Take the V-tool, just make this line coming up here. Now to make the kernels, the first thing I'm going to do, because the grain is going in this direction, I'm going to make my V-tool cuts going across grain, doing the most difficult cut first. Then I will make the longer cuts. You save the easier cut for last. Because if I was to make these long cuts first, as I am going across grain, I would be chipping it out. I'm going to just finish up these leaves a little bit, getting rid of all the little flat areas. So the whole surface is carved. Then putting in the kernels going in this direction. Then I'll just smooth it up a little bit. I'm going to use colored pencil for the painting on it. I like the pastel look of colored pencil and to make the colored pencil durable I'm going to spray a clear varnish finish over it. I really like using colored pencils to do my painting when it's when I want a pastel effect. I like the Blick Studios because this is not a watercolor pencil. This is just a regular wax pencil. It is fade resistant, and that's very important because uh, I don't want these to fade. 
So when I put this on and then I let it dry, I put it on and I blend it with the water and then I will spray it with varnish finish on it. So it's high pigmentation, but it still gives you a real nice pastel color. So the two pencils I'm going to be starting with is going to be the yellow and the green. I have just clear water here. And to do my blending, I'm using an oil paint brush. This is an old brush for oil paint. And I got it cut on a skew, a little bit on an angle. And I use this to go in there and do the scrubbing. Take the yellow pencil and just... And you see it doesn't get it all over. It needs to be blended. I'm doing the sides and everything. Just laying down some of the yellow. I wet my brush and now I will scrub it in there. It evens it out very nicely. The same with the green. And maybe I'll take just a little lighter green to do maybe the some areas here. Let's do the darker under the leaf and a little bit lighter. So I'm going to, right where I went with the darker one, I'll also do the lighter one. And where it just peeled away from the corn, I'll use the darker one. Wrap it around the side a little bit. Then I take the paintbrush and I just start blending it. To see there's almost no pigment coming into the water. It's all staying on the wood and the brush is doing a very good job at blending the thing that I like about this is I put on enough, but I can still see the natural wood. 